he is the candidate that Joe Biden and the Democrats want to run against for the presidency in, in, in the 2024 election. They think that they can beat him. So the indictments actually work very well. They help Trump win the nomination, but also tarnish him for the general election. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here today with Editor-in-Chief Hugo Gordon. And Hugo, you wrote in your column this week about a recent cable news appearance by Hillary Clinton and the fact that she and the House went after Donald Trump for spreading election lies, and you sort of noted the irony in that. Yeah, it was an extraordinary irony, although it's not one which she has not uh, displayed before. Um, she was talking with Rachel Maddow on MSNBC. Uh, Rachel Maddow set up a, a, a prompt which was uh, along the lines of, you know, when people tell, uh, when, when political figures uh, tell uh, the public that, uh, you know, elections are, are rigged and that no election, uh, and the results are false unless they win, etc., 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 it's dangerous for democracy. And you could have said this was sort of setting things up to grill Hillary Clinton about the lies that she spread. Uh, relating to the 2016 election, the, the Russia hoax. But Hillary Clinton, you know, climbed onto the moral high ground and said, yes, the truth matters. And it's, you know, that, that falsehood and mistrust of public institutions are being uh, deliberately inculcated uh, into people's minds. She is the one whose campaign deliberately concocted a falsehood about the Russia collusion hoax. She stuck with it. She went after she was beaten in 2016. She called President Trump um, an illegitimate president, and uh, she said that the election had been stolen. She's down in the gutter with President Trump in this regard, and it was just extraordinary uh, to hear it. I mean, it's one of those things that which fall, one of those comments which fall into the category of shocking but not surprising. She does it all the time, but nevertheless, it's the most recent one, and she was doing it in the context of the uh, Trump indictments. This is the fourth indictment of yep. Donald Trump. Politically speaking, in terms of the political implications for Donald Trump, where does this rank relative to the other ones? Is this one going to be potentially perilous for him? No, I don't think it is. In some ways, as these things stack up, and he's already joked that he just needs one more indictment to get <laughs> to secure the nomination. Um, you know, as these things stack up, they, uh, they devalue. The more you have of almost anything, the less value they have. And now that there are four, uh, I think that it, it in some ways helps him. And this is actually not, this is part of the, the democratic uh, hopes. The, the indictments actually secure a degree of support for Trump, which it goes beyond his base support. There are a lot of people who look at these indictments and regard them with some justification as politically motivated. And they therefore harden their support around Donald Trump in the primary, making him more likely to win. And yet, he is the candidate that Joe Biden and the Democrats want to run against for the presidency in, in, in the 2024 election. They think that they can beat him. So the indictments actually work very well. They help Trump win the nomination, but also tarnish him for the general election. Uh, and, you know, the, ultimately the conversation that Democrats want to have surrounding all of this and the one that they are having regarding the Georgia case rather than the merits of the case. They just want to have a broader conversation about the future of democracy and threats to it. You know, d d does the, the unprecedented and aggressive nature of this case ever factor into that conversation? Yes, uh, the question of democracy obviously arises and, and the Democrats say that they are defending democracy with these indictments because they are punishing or they intend to punish um, a, or, 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 or the President Trump will be punished for the crimes that he committed, uh, particularly relating to January the 6th. But prosecuting a, a presidential candidate comes loaded with, with problems, and the latest indictment, the Georgia indictment, is extraordinarily widely cast. There are 18 co-conspirators, and intriguingly, some of the crimes or alleged crimes for which, of which they are accused are rebutted by uh, the, the framing of previous uh, indictments. For example, Jack Smith's one uh, says that the provisional electors were deceived, and yet provisional electors have been included as co-conspirators in the Georgia indictment. So th 
the, the, some of the people in the, in the Georgia indictment were uh, entirely transparent about what they were doing. They invited the press to their proceedings as the slate of provisional uh, electors were, were, were drawn up, and yet they have now been charged with what I was essentially uh, uh, political activity, and they have been rolled up into the sort of racketeering charges which are meant to, uh, designed to go after mobsters. And uh, 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 this sort of cr criminalization of political activity is extremely dangerous in the long run. There will be copycat and uh, tit-for-tat prosecutions uh, in coming years, and that isn't good for American democracy. Well, Hugo, thanks for being here today. You can get more writing from Hugo and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.